Hi, welcome to this recording of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud describing the hybrid scenario of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud and SAP SQL Data Warehousing. It's important to mention that we're leveraging a full stack web IDE to build SAP SQL Data Warehousing applications directly on the same database tenant where SAP Data Warehouse Cloud is running on. I'm logged into the SAP Web IDE where within the workspace environment, I created a project called SQL Data Warehouse in Data Warehouse Cloud. So it's a local project to the Web IDE where you need to follow certain prerequisites like create a database folder uh, and within the source folder, I created the according database artifacts. Like within the calculation view, I created a calculation view which is based on two tables we got access to. In this environment, we're focusing on joining the data from sales order items and sales orders. Run some aggregation based on the below join and also adding semantic information to the calculation view. So once you double click on the semantics, you can see all the columns relevant for the calculation view as a join out of the two tables below. There are some measures involved like gross amount, net amount, tax amount, and also quantity where certain aggregation has been specified. In this perspective, it's sum. As another prerequisite based on the integration of the web IDE generated HDI containers and the according database artifacts, we need to be able from a data warehouse cloud perspective to get access to the HDI container. To do so within this data, SQL data warehouse project, we have two roles specified. You need to specify the artifacts you're interested to grant access for others, like for the data warehouse cloud environment to grant access to where we granting access on the table level, like sales orders and sales order items, but also on the calculation view, sales order items calculation view. And the same is true for the second HTTP roll file, where we need to grant the same level of access for a certain role, which is relevant from a data warehouse cloud perspective. Once we've done so, we also need to make sure that we're building the project into the right space. We can do so in terms of setting the project privileges and settings. I navigate down to Cloud Foundry. Where the project settings in terms of API endpoint are relevant to assign your SCP user account to the according endpoint in organization and also apply the mapping to the space within the Data Warehouse Cloud database tenant. So the setting is connecting to the Data Warehouse Cloud database tenant and we're deploying the HDI container straight on the database of the Data Warehouse Cloud tenant. Let's save it and close it. And last but not least, run the build step, which will generate the HDI container and also deploy the database artifacts like the tables, the roles, the calculation views into a specified HDI container. That might take, some, take a moment for completion. Now the build has been successfully completed and the container we specified within the YAML file is called SQL Data Warehouse in Data Warehouse Cloud underscore HDI database one. We're done for this moment for the web IDE. On the other tab, I'm logged in into SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. As the first activity, I need to assign the previously built HDI container to a space within SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. To do so, I'm switching to the space management and I'm reusing a prepared space to assign the HDI container. Within the schema access tab, I have the ability to switch to HDI containers, hit the plus button 
to get an overview on the unassigned HCI containers available on the Database Cloud tenant. And apply a filter and pick and choose the HCI container built from the Web IDE perspective. I'm going to edit, like assign the HDI container to the space. As the next activity, I'm going to start to build a data builder view. We're using a graphical view in, the, in this perspective to start to integrate the data coming from different sources. Within the sources section of the graphical view, the HDI container we assign to the space becomes visible including all the database artifacts, including the calculation view and the two tables I deployed from the Web IDE project perspective. Let's get started and reuse the calculation view from the HDI container within the context of the graphical view builder. I'm going to import the table. The system is going to create a remote table pointing to the calculation view from the HDI container and the import and deployment has been successfully completed. If you're interested to get the insights of the calculation view, you can run the query preview and it's executing the calculation view within the HDI container. As a next step, I'm interested to leverage capabilities out of Data Warehouse Cloud. I prepared within shared object a space called master data, where I'm able to leverage master data in a shared environment. So I'm able to bring in master data to harmonize the view on the different perspective. So I'm going to join the product master data information with the calculation view capabilities. On the right, there is a proposed join in this sense, um, it's product ID. So once you preview the data, you get the information on joining the calculation view information with the product master data information. As you can see on the data preview, the join has been successfully completed. So this was the topic to leverage a calculation view from an HDI container with um, a shared, shared master data space here product and bring that together within a common graphical view. In addition to this capability, you're probably interested to add another source to this data view as you're looking for additional information on products as an example. To do so, I have an existing connection pointing to HANA database where I'm interested to take advantage of some tables, like in this sense, product text information, because I'm interested to enhance the graphical view by product text information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join product and product text to get a common overview and additional information when running the data view. The connection to the product text has been successfully completed. So the system automatically is proposing to join information based on product text and products. If you run the preview, you get the information on harmonized master data coming from a shared master data space and also from a remote connection and also joining this information with the calculation view information deployed by the Web IDE projects. Once you run the preview and also the according join is listed on the right. So this is the data preview coming from product text information joining to, with product master data and also joining the sales order items calculation view information. Next would be to position the output node in the sense that we can reuse this one from a story perspective. 
for visualization. On the business name, we call it sales order item, calculation view, and product. It's going to be a type of analytical data set, and we also want to allow the consumption for external tools to consume the model. The specifics on the analytical data set is that we have the ability to specify measure information. And let's have a quick look on the according measures. We're interested on gross amount, net amount, tax amount, and also quantity. Once we're done, we're going to save this view and also deploy it to Data Warehouse Cloud. Okay, let's run the deploy step. Deployment has been successfully completed. as you can see also on the deployment status. Now, next step would be to create a story to consume the information from this graphical view. So we'll switch to the story builder. Let's create a story and we're connecting to the graphical view, integrating the data from the HDI container, the shared master data space, and also from a remote HANA connection integrating the data from the different sources. So we're going to pick and choose the graphical calculation, graphical view. The connection has been established and now we're going to create a visualization component within SAC. We're going to add the measures coming from the graphical view. And we're also going to add the dimensions, like interested in sales org. Fiscal year period. Product ID. And probably also the product category ID. Within the chart on the left, you can see the preview of the data, which is connecting to the graphical view we create on the previous steps. You can now save the view for later reuse. And you're able to share the visualization of the story with other users logged on to Data Warehouse Cloud. Thank you for watching this recording.